Hi, it's Katrina. From ancient towns lost to time to a classified shipwreck filled with treasure, here are eight mysterious discoveries found underwater. Number 8. Bulgarian Atlantis A Bronze Age settlement that is believed to be older than the pyramids in Egypt has been discovered in Bulgaria. Underwater archaeologists found evidence of a human settlement near the mouth of the Ropotamo River on Bulgaria's southern Black Sea coast. They believe it could date back to the 5th millennium BC. It looks like over time, the waters of the Black Sea rose, causing the inhabitants to abandon it until it was finally completely submerged underwater. The Black Sea Map Project is made up of an international team of archaeologists on a mission to survey the area and explore how human societies in prehistory responded to environmental change. Beside the settlement, they have also found over 60 shipwrecks ranging from the ancient Greeks to the Romans to other powerful groups such as the Venetians and Genoans. This place is perfect for preserving things due to the anoxic conditions of the water, which means there is very little oxygen that prevents the decay of wood and other organic matter. The divers have found house timbers, hearths, and ceramics right off the shore. The team of Black Sea Map says the village became a sheltered bay visited by ancient Greek colonists of the Archaic period, then a harbor for early Byzantine seafarers, and finally an anchorage used by the Ottomans as the waters continue to rise. Archaeologists found the harbor where the modern resort town of Sozopol currently stands. It's believed to have been used from the 5th century BC to modern times. Researchers believe it was connected to the Greek colony of Apollonia Ponta, and some of the materials found are dated to the Early Bronze Age. The structures could have been built 1,500 years before the Great Pyramids of Giza. Scientists believe people may have lived there 1,000 years earlier than originally thought, at a time when the whole area was on dry land. Local homes were built on wooden columns because of rising sea levels, with researchers finding remnants of pillars preserved underwater. As scientists continue to explore, they hope to uncover more about the settlement over the next few years, hoping it will shed light on the lives of those who lived there 6,000 years ago, before what remained was buried under sand and water in the Black Sea. Number 7. Inca Offerings Lake Titicaca might sound funny, but it was a very sacred place to the Inca. Lake Titicaca was an important area for rituals and offerings to their sun god. During an underwater survey of the lake located between Bolivia and Peru, archaeologists recovered an offering box made from volcanic stone, discovered lying on a reef 18 feet below the surface of the lake. The box was sealed by a round stone plug that had been undisturbed since it was deposited more than five centuries ago. Covered in sediment, the box contained a small rolled cylinder of gold sheeting and a figurine of a llama made from an oyster shell. Possibly an offering to a goddess known as Mama Cocha, the gold cylinder is believed to be a replica of a bracelet that Inca noblemen wore on their right forearm, with a llama representing the Inca's sturdy beast of burden. This is not the first discovery made in Lake Titicaca. In modern times, divers, including Jacques Cousteau, have searched the waters for various treasures, finding two dozen stone boxes with differing shapes and contents, including similar figurines to the one found in the box. Often made of rare and valuable material, including silver and gold, the offerings are believed to have been deposited for multiple reasons, ranging from asking for things to giving things they believed their gods had asked for. Before the Inca, a group known as the Tiwanaku, a pre-Hispanic civilization, lived in the area between 200 BC and 1000 AD. They most likely thought of the lake as a sacred place as well. Scientists believe the offerings could have been linked to a cult of Inca ancestors, who made pilgrimages to the Island of the Sun, which was the center of the origin myths for the Inca people. Some also believe the figurine in the shape of the llama could possibly have been pleas for fertility of llama and alpaca herds, who the Inca people believed originated from the lake. It's possible they may have been praying for fertility of the land and abundant harvest, which would have been important to these ancient people. Number 6. Aboriginal Archaeological Site 65,000 years ago, when people first arrived in Australia, sea levels were 262 feet lower than they are today. This means that there was more dry land along the coast where people lived, and during the last ice age, sea levels dropped to 426 feet lower than they are now. For thousands of years, generations of people would have lived in towns and settlements that are now underwater. 18,000 to 8,000 years ago, the world warmed up and water levels rose covering much of the coastline. 
A group of scientists from archaeologists, geologists, divers, pilots, and more have come together to try to find submerged archaeological sites. They have uncovered two sites so far in what is known as the Dampier Archipelago. The first site had hundreds of stone artifacts located on the seabed, including grinding stones used to grind seed into flour for bread making. They were also sometimes used to crack animal bones to extract their marrow and to pulverize the cartilage of smaller animals such as lizards. Similar stones were also used to grind up pigments and to sharpen and smooth wooden and stone tools. Located at the second site, known as Flying Foam Passage, researchers discovered traces of human activity near what was a submerged freshwater spring, 46 feet below sea level. Here they also found stone cutting tools. Both sites were radiocarbon dated to be about 7,000 years old when they were submerged by rising sea levels. Previous expeditions in the area of the Burup Peninsula uncovered human activity and rock art as well as stone tools, telling us more about the first people to arrive to Australia. As these ancient sites became submerged, the secrets of these ancient people were lost. But now, as researchers continue to conduct these underwater expeditions, we have a better understanding of the early people who traveled in boats from the islands of eastern Indonesia. Number 5. Underwater Quarry Discoveries Two British divers known for specializing in searching for lost belongings underwater recently uncovered old wheel pipework and a heavily corroded building 60 feet below the surface of a flooded quarry in England. But after more searching, they made a more shocking discovery. In the flooded quarry located in Cornwall, the men also discovered 1,000 high-power explosives. What started out as a routine dive one Saturday to clean plastic from local quarries, the men came upon a bag that was sealed and seemed completely unremarkable. But after they surfaced and opened up the bag, they found blasting caps that are used to detonate larger bombs. After calling the police and the bomb squad, they got a better look at what they had discovered and realized that there were 1,000 blasting caps in the bag. Surprisingly, discoveries like this are not uncommon in the area. The Cornwall Maritime Archaeology Group often undertakes similar dives, specializing in exploring historic sites such as shipwrecks off the coast. A pair of divers exploring a different quarry found the remains of a granite building with rusty vices, and in 2019, the diving group discovered the remains of an ancient shipwreck which sank in 1684. Old timbers and a cannon were discovered from the Dutch sailing ship the Skydam, which wrecked off the coast while carrying munitions. Not long after the ship was discovered, two hand grenades believed to have come from the ship also washed ashore, still filled with gunpowder. Made with iron shells, these were the earliest type of hand grenade used by British soldiers. A local historian discovered the shells in November of 2018, and upon first glance he thought it was a rock, until he dropped it and it broke open to reveal the gunpowder still inside. This ship has an intriguing history, starting as a trading ship until it was captured by pirates off the coast of Gibraltar in 1683. After the English later recaptured the ship, it became a carrier ship and was transporting military weapons back to England from Morocco when it ran aground and sank in the ocean. Clearly, if you are out diving, keep an eye out because there are all kinds of things waiting to be found. Number 4. Ice Age Cave Fossils the Yucatan Peninsula is well known for its underground cave system known as cenotes. These were sacred places to the Maya and played a major role in their belief system. But in this case, it wasn't artifacts that diving archaeologists found, but preserved bones that were trapped for centuries underwater, belonging to large Ice Age beasts. Known as the Hoyo Negro or the Black Hole, the cave held secrets to the ancient past and the people who mingled among some of Earth's creatures that are long gone. Inside the massive water-filled chamber, there are remains of at least 28 animals. As archaeologists and paleontologists examine the fossils, they discover ties to the Great American Interchange, the migration of ancient animals between North and South America. Within the underwater cave, entire animals were preserved because of low oxygen levels in the water that have kept the remains undisturbed for more than 10,000 years. Among the animals found were saber-toothed cats, peccaries or skunk pigs, mountain lions, tapirs, and an elephant-like animal known as a gomphothere. Preserved within the cave were also footprints of ancient bears that were crusted over in a film of calcite. The team identified a new species of ground sloth in the cave, whose name translates from the Mayan for Great Clawed Dweller of the Underworld. Divers found three preserved skulls of an extinct bear species in the cave, a cousin of the Andean spectacled bear. 
Because they were so well preserved, it allowed scientists to create high quality reproductions for further study. With only a fraction of the remains excavated, it lends much promise to the belief that more bones and other extinct and previously undiscovered species will be found deep in the cenotes of the Yucatan Peninsula. Number 3. Invaluable Shipwreck Have you ever wondered what happens to priceless artifacts when they are discovered? Well, the fight for the world's most valuable shipwreck is getting messy. Worth billions of dollars, it was missing for years, and now that it's been found, everyone wants a piece of the pie. When a 300-year-old shipwreck known as the San Jose was discovered off the Colombian coast, experts estimated the value of gold, silver, and jewels at almost $20 billion. But with so much treasure up for grabs, it makes sense that multiple parties would jockey for the position of claiming it as their own. When a group known as the Sea Search Armada revealed the location of the San Jose to Colombian officials, the government passed a law that claimed ownership of the wreck. Understandably, Sea Search Armada wanted to claim at least half of the treasure for discovering the wreck in the first place in the Caribbean Sea 11 miles offshore from Cartagena. But as court battles continued, the Colombian government announced that one of their own expeditions involving the Navy and archaeologists had discovered the wreck site decades earlier. Spain and England also want a piece, because why not? The San Jose was part of a Spanish fleet that transported several years worth of taxes and business profits owed to the Spanish crown and two galleons that were armed with more than 60 guns each. At the time it set sail, in 1708, Spain and England were fighting the War of Spanish Succession. And in June of that same year, the Spanish fleet came under fire from English ships, during which the San Jose went up in a spectacular explosion. Burning planks rained down over the combatants and the ship sunk almost immediately after the blast, with only 11 members of the 600-man crew surviving. Made famous in Gabriel Garcia Marquez's novel Love in the Time of Cholera, the Spanish galleons never made it to King Philip V of Spain, who was hoping to further finance his war. But when the British Navy, armed with pistols and swords, tried to board the ship and take it as their own, the San Jose was then destroyed. Some even theorized that the ship's captain, rather than surrendering it to the British and returning to Spain empty-handed, could have ignited the gunpowder on the ship and exploded it himself. For centuries, the ship stayed lost on the ocean floor, but with its discovery near the Rosario Islands, a battle began over who should lay claim to its treasures. Besides its monetary value, it is an extremely valuable find for everyone, representing almost 300 years of colonial history from Europe and the American territory. You would think everyone would be in a rush to bring it up, but they are not. The ship has been submerged for 300 years, and this guarantees the right to conservation, said underwater archaeologist Juan Guillermo Martín. If we don't have the conditions right now in Colombia to assume the rescue, it makes no sense to do it. It's a fundamental principle of responsibility for Colombian heritage, but also for humanity. With the San Jose being found in Colombian waters, it's difficult to say who will end up enjoying the spoils. In July 2018, there was a deadline for companies to submit proposals to excavate the 300-year-old wreck, but the president of Colombia later suspended the decision, citing legal challenges. In the meantime, the government of Colombia has made all the information regarding the location of the ship as classified. Number 2. Roman Ship in Croatia Off the coast of the Croatian city of Pag, divers have discovered an ancient underwater vessel. When a group of firefighters were going for a dive, not far from the island of Pag, they came across the remains of an ancient ship and cargo that dated back to Roman antiquity. This was not the first time the 2,000-year-old remains were discovered. A group of local divers had stumbled across the same remains earlier, but had previously ignored the pile, thinking it was just random debris at the bottom of the sea. But the firefighters also were divers and included an underwater archaeologist, so they recognized the pile of squares as building materials that were later proved to date back to the Roman era. Upon further exploration, it was determined that the rubble was part of a sunken ship's cargo of roof coverings that are similar to terracotta tiles or shingles. Believed to date to the beginning of the 1st century BC, the boat was lying on the sea floor with an estimated 600 pieces of amphora, or small earthen containers, found on the boat. This 2,000-year-old ship was probably trying to find shelter from the extreme winds common on that side of the island. The ship is set to become a new attraction for diving tourism, with 180 diving centers already recorded in Croatia. The divers are very happy to have found it, but said it was bittersweet because once these places are reported, continued dives are banned until the areas can be protected and preserved. And then other divers will most likely be there and the place is no longer as private. 
number one, underwater Moroccan city. Along the Atlantic coast of Morocco, archaeologists have made the discovery of several shipwrecks off the coast of Safi. One might date back to between 2700 BC and 900 BC, during the Bronze Age. But the purpose of all of these underwater expeditions is not to find ships at all, but to find the lost city of Tikhalim. There are remnants under the water, but scientists are looking for more evidence to describe the ruins underneath the waves. The coast of Morocco is teeming with all kinds of archaeological treasures, and it is just a question of being able to find them and preserve them, which is no easy feat. The local archaeological association is hoping the discoveries will bring to light how the inhabitants in the area used to live. Fossilized human bones were also found in prehistoric caves in the area, and along with the remains of the newly discovered ancient warship, it is clear that Morocco is a hotbed of archaeological discoveries. But the search for the city is still on. Once operating as an essential trading hub between Africa and Europe, the underwater city of Tikhalin has some believing that it could possibly be the ancient lost city of Atlantis. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon. Bye!